All right. So everybody wanted me to, not everybody, I say that every time, not everybody wanted me to do anything right. But people wanted me to talk about Omega 3, Omega 6. Here it is. Here's the video. I got a couple of videos to watch uh, from Goldner, who I covered last April, maybe. Um, and then I got McDougal. And I just, I brought this up. I'm going to have to look over here because it's big, the bigger screen. Uh, but here is, so Omega 3. Oh, wait, here's Omega 6. Most Americans eat uh, more omega-6 fats than three, but 10 times more. A low intake of three is not good for the cardiovascular health, so bringing the two into better balance is a good idea. But don't do this by cutting back on healthy omega-6 fats. Instead, add some extra threes, right? Uh, the human body, this is omega-3, so the human body can make most of the types of fats it needs from the other fats or raw materials. This isn't the case with omega-3s, so you got to have them, right? The body cannot make them from scratch like other foods so, or like other things, so it's got to get it up from the food. Um, all right, so this is on McDougal's what is it, June 2002, volume one, number six. I, I probably will link this stuff below. I, sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. Uh, good omega-3 fish fats. Um, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Um, but it, he talks about basically how the, the industry is trying to sell you omega-3 uh, fish. And honestly, the fish themselves don't actually produce omega-3. <laughs> They get it from the sea vegetables like kelp and stuff that they eat. So <clears throat> it's a it's a myth that you got to get uh, omega threes from uh, fish oil caps because you can just have the source yourself. All right, and I think here's another one. Anyway, I, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, everybody can read at their own pace, but I wanted to get into Do I have McDougal up here. I don't. All right. I'll be right back because I know he talks about it. Stay here in Adelaide, Australia. Check out this bus stop. <clears throat> All right. I was looking for McDougal. I did find it, I think. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but then I came across this vintage. Advert. So this is like a bus stop advert. You can see here. Check this out. So we the bus stop advert. Double the Omega 3s, taste in raw fish. <laughs> We've got Bear Grylls. He looks like he's been out for days. I wonder how much this dude got paid for this. <laughs> not not uh, Durian Rider, but the, uh, what's the guy, Bear Grylls or whatever, the guy that is a survivalist, but he goes to a nice posh ho motel or hotel or whatever after every shoot. And days, but his clothing's all clean. So this photo, this, sh this photo here is not even real. He's holding a saltwater fish. That's a saltwater fish species. <laughs> These survival shows crack me up. They are entertaining, but the reality is is uh, different than the show, right? But he's in a freshwater stream location. So even the photo's fake. <laughs> All right, so there's that, right? Now, I'm not saying any of it's bad. If you want to take omega-3s, there's no reason to t take fish version of it because they don't even make it themselves. It, you know, it could be good in some... You know what? I'm going to watch Goldner first because she, she's like all about it, right? People nowadays don't really eat omega-3 sources. Flax and chia seeds have the highest dose of omega-3s in the plant world that you can find. They are primarily omega-3. So I use those as a rapid way of replacing it, right?
Now you mentioned something about flax and chia seeds. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I get it. And I understand that they are omega threes, but why are they so important and how does that affect, um, you know, your body in, in, in healing? Omega three fatty acids are supposed to be a part of your cellular membrane. So every one of us is made of cells, right? And on the inside of our cells is all water soluble stuff, right? Okay. Then we have a membrane around each cell that has fats in it, right? Mm-hmm. To keep and, and when that's gone is when you start getting Alzheimer's because uh, the brain waves and or whatever the the nerves don't talk to each other right anymore. One side of it dissolves. It, it's it's called a phospholipid. <clears throat> it's fat on the outside, water dissolvable on the inside, and that's so we don't dissolve. Because oh. if we didn't have those fatty membranes around our cells. We would just dissolve. Like and that's what happens on Alzheimer's. Your fatty uh, acid or the fatty coatings around your nerves, your cells, they start dissolving. And wires get crossed and all. eventually uh, the, what to your, you know, the nerves to your heart um, lose their ability to send a signal. And it's east. Get right. wet and then we'd be a puddle ourselves. So there's <laughs> right. these fatty membranes, okay? Now, mm-hmm. One of the fats that are important in that membrane is supposed to be omega-3 fatty acids. Now, okay. typically, if we, if we went back to like tribal humanity, where we were walking around through the forest, we would be eating mostly things that grow on trees and bushes, right? right. Because mm-hmm. we, that's what we would do. The bush. That's what we did, right? right. Mostly green stuff, because when you look around, everything's mostly green, right? And then occasionally you're like, oh my God, a fruit tree. And then you'd eat some fruit. That's right? the only reason we can see color, is to see ripe fruit in the bush. Like, but you don't walk around and see fruit everywhere you look, right? It's green. Right? <laughs> it's green. green. Greens and greens, and vegetables and greens, and then ooh, bananas, right? And then so so right. we were doing that. We would actually have a really good balance of omega three to omega six. So I was talking about those two parts of the immune system, because there's actually some omega threes even in greens, but a little bit. I mean, there's actually a decent amount. If you look at a calorie count, uh, there's a decent amount of protein and fats in greens. All right, um, and. Those omega-3 fatty acids, though, when they're a part of our cell membranes, they make our membrane very flexible and receptive to signaling. So we have a nice flexible membrane that can do like a catcher's mitt, I always think of it, right? Like it can squeeze. So if there's a signal that comes along and this signal says, I've been working out like crazy, I want to lose fat, the signal comes and the catcher's mitt catches it and it releases fat. Another signal comes along, we have some inflammation to repair, I'd like you to repair it, it catches it, it does the job. Most people nowadays, don't really eat omega-3 sources. Flax and chia seeds have the highest dose of omega-3s in the plant world that you can find. If you look at the t- Terra Homera, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and I think a lot of people have heard of them because of that book, uh, Born to Run. But um, they make this concoction with chia seeds, and apparently they can run 400 miles at one sitting because of it. Some corn and chia pudding thing that they that they take with them. Sounds a whole lot cheaper than these uh, gel packs nowadays. These gel packs are getting like $4 a piece. They are primarily omega-3. So I use those as a rapid way of replacing it, right? So if you don't have omega-3s, your body uses the second best, which would be omega-6. Omega-6 is in meat, dairy, oils, processed foods. So in most people's diet, constant, right? Right. So their cells are full of omega-6 instead. Now, omega-6 makes a cell stiff. If the cell is stiff, Signals that come along will bounce off and never be received, and okay. toxins get trapped inside as well. Okay. With the omega threes in there, toxins can leave, but mm-hmm. when it's a stiff, hard membrane, toxins stay trapped inside. Nutrients can't get in. Signals can't dock, and now again, you have a sick cell. It's getting poisoned with toxins. It can't get nutrition. It can't get any of the results, and so therefore, you're not going to be able to move forward. Not going to get healthy, right? Okay, so my only question to that is, if you don't have any of that stuff, because I don't, and a lot of people who watch my channel probably don't have that processed meat, oil, dairy, all that, do you really need to bother with omega-3s? This is my question. I did actually do some omega-3 stuff last Lent. Everything's Lent, right? Um, I didn't notice any real difference. Although, other than losing 30 pounds, if it was omega threes, but I didn't add a lot. I didn't add a lot. <clears throat> I got another one. It might be the exact same situation. I don't know. Let's watch. That creates your inflammatory immune system. Whoa, so, for most bro. people, they.
Oh, omega that. sixes, which come from meat and dairy and oil, but also in nuts and seeds and other things that creates your inflammation. Here's the thing. I don't need any of that. Especially with the nuts, man. I mean, they're like $30, $40 a pound now. I'm not spending that. Your immune system. So for most people, they can create inflammation all day long like a boss, but they boss. have no ability to return to baseline. So it reminds me, this is going to be Dork Session 101, but this reminds me of music that you would play in a Japanese role-playing game, otherwise known as JRPG. Any dorks, leave comments then, down in the section. I, I guarantee. Since recovery is based on optimizing omega-3s, does that mean that we shouldn't eat other nuts and avocados until we've achieved recovery? So for this is actually in the in the okay. So this is the other question that I have. Maybe I'll try to get this woman. I did get a response back from Georgie. I have yet to read it. I, I, my life is just. I need a secretary. I feel like. Um, this is the other question I have because if you did spend your entire life of not eating this way and getting obese, overweight, land whale, whatever you want to call it with omega sixes and that stuff is dumping out into your blood system and it's causing issues like that with your cells is it a good thing to have omega threes until you're not obese anymore now i know obese and everything like that is becoming a trigger word uh with certain groups but i am not of that group so i can say it there you go. But I mean, if you have that, is it causing an issue with the rest of your body? It, it, it's, I, I don't know if you can test for this or, or what. Classes in the bundles. I explain how the different uh, omega six and omega three pathways work for recovery. So one of the areas that I really specialize is understanding how food affects your immune system, right? So if you have an inflammatory immune system, which is necessary, we need our inflammatory immune system. When we get an infection, when we get uh, you know an injury, it's our inflammatory immune system that fixes it. The anti-inflammatory immune system returns you to baseline. The anti-inflammatory immune system needs omega-3 fatty acids to be created. And so most people are very starved of it. And it's why people get chronic inflammation is they can't clear it. Omega-6s, which come from meat and dairy and oil, but also in nuts and seeds and other things, that creates your inflammatory immune system. So for most people, they can create inflammation all day long like a boss, but they have no ability to return to baseline. There's so little omega-3 in their system compared to the omega-6. So what you're looking for is a balance. Right now, balance, theoretically, balance, balance. the balance you want is somewhere around nine to one to one to one. I had somebody who actually tested this recently and her level was- That's a massive difference, nine to one or one to one. What? 200 to one. So if you are trying to quickly increase your omega threes compared to your omega sixes, the best thing you can do is take out other nuts and seeds because those are plant sources of omega six. But what will that Furman guy, if you haven't seen that video, I just did a, a video on the firm. He wants you eating raw cruciferous fruit, nuts, beans, and starches all or something like that all at the same time. Create a bomb in your uh, intestinal tract, you know? What about the omega-3s, man? And just increase. This, is, this isn't the issue. Nobody agrees on anything. I, anything, you know, so uh, what, have, what are us uh, fast people supposed to do, man? But I didn't, did I do any of this? I didn't do any of this when I've lost weight in the past. Uh, I did have some nuts though when I was raw. Flax seeds, chia seeds, cold pressed flax oil, things like that to get the omega 3. I know women claim that they need this stuff more. Maybe they do. I don't know. Level up, right? Um, but in general, most nuts and seeds have a ratio of six to three that's somewhere around nine to one. So when you're healthy, you don't have to think about that at all. Like I've been lupus free 16 years. I just turned 45 last week. Like I'm doing great. If I want to make a cashew cheese sauce, I don't think twice about it. You know, it's fine. But when you are trying to accelerate the repair of your super high omega 3 deficiency, then temporarily that could help. But how would you know? I guess, do you got a test for it? I don't know. I got to call somebody about that. 
All right, so let's get uh, the McDougal response. After, after the protein myth, which is you have to eat meat to get enough protein, and after the calcium myth, which means you have to eat enough. I'm going to get this one out of the way. Somebody's going to say that that 45-year-old doctor looked better than the 75-year-old McDougal. 30 years in between the two of them um, might be the difference. But somebody's going to say it in the comments. I guarantee it. Dairy to get enough calcium comes the omega-3 myth. And that is you need to eat fish to get essential fats, to grow your brain, to be healthy, to have a normal pregnancy, etc. You need to be eating fish fat. Well, let's take a look at that recommendation for a minute. Omega-3 fats. What this means is that Somehow, a metabolic process has been able to remove some hydrogen at the carbon number three position. In other words, one carbon, two carbons, three carbons. At that position, what we cause is a, is a double bond. That's why we call it omega-3. Only plants have the ability to cause that to happen. Like I was saying with the fish thing. You know what it is. You know what it. Is? You know what happens is these companies have all this byproduct left. They got all. They've murdered all these fish. They slaughtered them. Meats off. Bones are sitting there. Guts are sitting there. And they're like, what do we do with this? I know we can sell it to these people. I know we'll create an ad telling people that they got to have fish oil, otherwise they're gonna die. I mean, that's what it is. They create a fear and they sell you the re the the recovery from the fear. Only plants have the ability to take the hydrogens away at the carbon three position, to create a double bond at the carbon three position, only plants. So how in the world does a fish have all this omega-3 fat? The fish ate algae or seaweed, which made the original omega-3 fats. Okay, so the fish does concentrate a lot of this fat in its body fat, is that good or bad? Well, it, you know, it- I mean, mix it with a little mercury, Sounds like a good combo, right? Oops. Got a little crazy. be good in some ways. It acts like a drug. Uh, it thins the blood, which may reduce your risk of forming a blood clot, which leads to a heart attack. But ladies and gentlemen, it thins the blood. And if you get in an accident, you're more likely to bleed to death with all that thin blood. Uh, it suppresses the immune system, these omega-3 fats do. And if what? What? All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I mean, they aren't even on the same paragraph of the same, like, book in the same library, man. I mean, this dude's saying it's going to suppress your, your immune system, and she's saying that it builds it. If you have an inflammatory arthritis, it can reduce this swelling and the pain associated with your arthritis, but it suppresses the immune system, ladies and gentlemen, the whole immune system. As a result, you cannot defend yourself against cancer or infections as readily as you would if you didn't include these in your, in your daily regime. They suppress the immune system. They're also pure fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear, and when biopsies are done of fish eaters, we find that they're full of omega-3 fats when we look at their body fat. Now, that's just part of the problem with deciding you're going to get your omega-3 fats from fish, as opposed to the original source, which is the plants, which is what you ought to be doing. All right. What? Other problems that are associated with that are the fact that fish are bio- Okay, so he's... He's talking about fish causing really I don't I don't confuse easily until I make videos and then I get confused. Accumulators of dangerous chemicals. What happens is the fish they come along and they eat the seaweed and they eat the algae and on this seaweed and algae uh, is a, a small concentration of environmental chem chemicals produced by industry, primarily factories. And these get into the water, the ocean, the rivers, the lakes, streams, et cetera. And they get on the, on the plants and the fish comes along and eats the plants. And because these chemicals are fat soluble, 
these chemicals are concentrated in the fish fat. Maybe, maybe a 500 or 1,000 fold, they're concentrated in the fish fat. And then what happens is a bigger fish comes along and eats the little fish. And because you have to eat a lot of little fish to keep the big fish going, you end up eat, taking a large amount of these chemicals. And so you further biomagnify the dangerous cancer-causing brain-damaging chemicals that are in the environment. And then, of course, we're at the end. I think he's talking about mercury here. I think. I, I feel like he needed to clarify this more. To the food chain, and we end up eating the fish. So you end up with a tremendous... You know, it's crazy to me because I, I did, uh, I worked in a fish place for years, 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 like almost a decade. The amount of tumors, even at that time, and we're talking about the early mid, from like 93 to 2001. No, 94 to 2001, because I'm old. Um, the amount of tumors on fish is insane. And most places will cut the tumors off so you don't think that anything's wrong with the filet. And then they turn them into fish patties. Tremendous amount of environmental contaminants. And probably the most, uh, the most notable of them is methyl mercury. Methyl mercury is very toxic to the body, particularly to the kidney system. And you can determine how much fish a person enjoys eating based upon the mer methyl mercury levels in their in their body fat, in their bloodstream. You can tell how much fish they eat. It's a direct relationship between methyl mercury and fish consumption. There was a doctor, no, a scientist that was working. The reason that you have to double glove now to work with mercury is because of this particular scientist. They were testing mercury or whatever, and they didn't realize there was a small little cut on their, their glove. And the mercury got into their blood system, and they didn't know it at first. And they started having really crazy problems that, like, their brain wasn't functioning well. They were kind of spaced out. I think they were driving, and they kind of like hit a pole, and they couldn't figure it out, right? And then they realized that it was mercury because there was a little bit higher elevated uh level of mercury in their blood system and they're like oh this isn't good so there's some other way there's some way that they can kind of reverse osmosis or whatever blood out of your system but it was too late because it was in all, all of their fat and fat is their brain is mostly fat and it was a lot of it was in her brain and it, uh, she died within three days Assumption. and this is the stuff that you eat when you eat fish you know, those are just some of the concerns. In addition to it being high fat, which is going to make you fat, that extra fat makes you diabetic. Fat uh, causes the body to develop insulin resistant, paralyzes the activity of insulin, contributes to diabetes. Uh, fish oils, uh, they contribute to cancer. Yeah, these omega-3 fats, not only do they suppress the immune system, but in other ways, they contribute to cancer development. So you end up with a whole bunch of health problems. Also consider the fish has no dietary fiber. So it's not gonna to contribute to a large healthy bowel movement. But one of the biggest concerns that I think you should have, and I certainly have as a grandfather, and you should as a parent, is the fact that the fish are almost gone. Mm. I've been interested in the ocean my entire life. I've been a windsurfer, mm. a, a ocean going boat sailor, I've enjoyed scuba diving. I just love to listen to the waves, uh, live by the ocean during part of my life. The ocean is very important to me, and I've always wanted to show it to my children. And I've had an opportunity to do that. But will we have that same opportunity for our grandchildren? You know, it's in question because 90% of the fish that were present when I was a young boy are gone. Mm. I don't know about all that. Through bycatch. You know, the fishing industry certainly needs some regulation, which is eating fish is far, far greater than any benefits that you might accrue. Stick with a healthy diet, which is a starch-based diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables, and leave those little fishies alone. I'm Dr. John McDougall. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. I don't know. Completely different end of the spectrum. Both are healthy. I have no idea. It, it does become confusing. Now, I know that Dr. Goldner was never overweight. And so that plays a huge role in whether or not 
it would make somebody fat. Now I know she says that you gotta you gotta take omega threes to lose fat or whatever. But then McDougal says the complete opposite of that. So it makes it all confusing. And then like Dr. McDougal said himself the other day, listening, uh, you can't listen to a doctor about diet um, because they don't know what they're talking about or something like that. And I just showed you two doctors. So make up your own mind about it, I guess. Uh, that is my video on Omega-3. Uh, my stance on it is uh, if you don't add the omega-6s do you really need to add the omega-3s i don't know anyways that's the video for today hope you liked it likes comments questions all that good stuff down below and subscribe and i'll talk to you next time